Many physical responses, such as light scattering phenomena, can be described by a complex response function, herein denoted as chi tilde. Here, the real part and imaginary part accounts for the light scattering and absorption, respectively. The relations we will derive in this video are fundamental in physics because they establish a crucial connection between the real and imaginary parts of complex response functions and finds widespread usage in condensed matter physics, electrical engineering, and beyond. But first, we need to clarify, what is the response function? Part 1. Linear Time Invariant Causal System What is the generalized response function? Let me first define what is a linear time invariant causal system. A system is linear if and only if it satisfies the superposition principle, which means that a linear combination of inputs Ft to the system produces a linear combination of the individual outputs Gt. A system is time invariant if a time delay of the input merely equates to a time delay of the output. In other words, the response of the system does not change with time. For a causal system, the impulse response of the system must only rely on the present and past values of the input to determine the output. This requirement is a necessary and sufficient condition for causality. We denote the impulse response function as chi. The step function ensures that there cannot be any response before the impulse. Now, what will be the output response for a general input function Ft? Let's denote the output to be Gt. In linear system theory, one can show that the behavior of the output Gt of a LTC system can be mathematically described by the convolution of the input Ft with the impulse response of the system. This is the crucial starting point for subsequent discussion. Taking the Fourier transform, one can show the well-known mathematical result that the Fourier transform of a convolution of two functions is the pointwise product of their Fourier transforms. Here G tilde omega and F tilde omega are the Fourier transform of Gt and Ft, while chi tilde omega is known as the generalized response function, given by the Fourier transform of the impulse response function as shown. Some remarks about the generalized response function is in order. First, we note that chi t has to be real since it describes the impulse response of a real physical system. Here we shall let omega be complex, where omega r and omega i denotes the real and imaginary part respectively. We can then expand the complex exponential function in terms of its sine and cosine terms as shown. Since chi t is real, it allows us to partition the generalized response function into real and imaginary parts, herein denoted by chi tilde r and chi tilde i. Due to their cosine and sine dependence, it is therefore apparent that the real part of the generalized response function is even with respect to omega r, while the imaginary part is an odd function instead. We shall exploit this property later. We should stress that there are different Fourier transform conventions in the literature. We will be using the engineering convention, unless stated otherwise. This is also the convention implemented in the popular scientific programming tool MATLAB. You can find tables of common Fourier transform pairs for these conventions at Wikipedia. Lastly, one can prove that chi tilde is analytic over the upper complex omega plane. In other words, it satisfies the Cauchy Riemann relations when omega i is positive. Note that we have used the engineering convention for Fourier transform in this case. If we had chosen the physics Fourier transform convention instead, then omega i would have to be negative for the generalized response function to be analytic. These conventions are also known as time conventions in the literature and can often be a source of confusion. For more detailed discussion about the linear causal, time invariant system, and their response functions, please refer to this video in this playlist on linear response theory. Part 2. The real and imaginary part of chi tilde are Hilbert transform pair. Okay, we have established that our generalized response function chi tilde is indeed an analytic function over the upper half of the complex omega plane. The Cauchy integral theorem would then require that any simply closed contour integral of chi tilde over the upper half plane will be zero. Now, if we introduce a pole to the integrand located on the real axis, herein denoted as omega prime, and we chose the contour of integration such that it does not enclose the singularity, then the Cauchy integral theorem would require the integral to have zero residue, thus it will be zero. To proceed, let's break up our contour into three pieces as shown. The integral over omega r from plus minus infinity, but excluding omega prime. 
This is mathematically represented by the principal value integral as shown. The green semicircle allows us to connect the disjointed black contour in a way that excludes the singularity. This integral is represented in its polar coordinates and by taking the limit where the arc radius is infinitesimally small. Finally, we have the red contour C prime, which joins the two ends of the black lines at infinity. Here we assume that the physical response function chi tilde vanishes as omega goes to infinity. Thus, the integration over C prime contributes nothing as it recedes to infinity. We can simplify the small arc integral by canceling the common complex exponential terms. Now, setting epsilon to zero as the limiting case, it simplifies to the following. As we see, the analyticity of chi tilde allows us to compute chi tilde at any real frequency in terms of a principal integral over all other real frequencies. Let's just rewrite this equation to emphasize this point more clearly. We restate again the equation we just obtained, but here we interchange the variables omega and omega prime. We remind you that both omega and omega prime are real frequencies. Let us write chi tilde in terms of its real and imaginary parts as shown. We identify that this pair of equations are the Hilbert transform pair. We will provide concrete examples of Hilbert transform pairs in the next chapter. Part 3. kramer kronig relation from Hilbert transform relation with examples. Starting from where we left previously, we are now ready to prove the kramers kronig relation. Let's begin with the left equation. First, we separate the integral into that over positive and negative real omega prime. For the second integral, we make a change of variable from omega prime to minus omega prime. We recall a previous result that the imaginary part of chi tilde is an odd function in frequency. Making use of this fact allow us to arrive at this step. Finally, the two integral pieces can be recombined again with some simple algebra. Feel free to pause here if you would like to inspect the math. Now, how about the inverse Hilbert transform equation? In similar fashion, the kramers kronig relation for the second equation can also be derived. Again, feel free to pause here if you would like to inspect the math. Great. Let me summarize the two key results in this chapter. We showed the mathematical result that the generalized response function chi tilde, which is an analytic function in the upper half plane, must satisfy the kramers kronig relations. These are bidirectional mathematical relations connecting the real and imaginary parts of chi tilde. These relations are often used to compute the real part from the imaginary part, or vice versa, of response functions in physical systems. Alternatively, one could also use the Hilbert transform relations, from which the Kramer's chronic relations was derived. One can perform Hilbert transform using the popular scientific programming tool, MATLAB, whose functions are stated here for your convenience. For example, here are some commonly used Hilbert transform pairs. The first two pairs are used in the Lorentzian dielectric model and the Drude model. We'll be making a video to go more in depth about these two models. Let me know if you would like me to share simple scripts to demonstrate these transformation. Hope you find this useful. See you in the next one.